We are now ready to give the species theoretic proof of the Lagrange inversion formula, a very beautiful, elegant, bijective proof of the classical Lagrange inversion theorem. So what is the Lagrange inversion theorem? So suppose we have a function f in um, uh, of a formal power series in some field f of characteristic 0. If you want, you can take this field f to be rational numbers or complex numbers. We don't want to be have trouble dividing with certain things. So we assume that the field has characteristic 0. And let's assume that f of 0 equals 0. What this really means is that if we write f as summation n greater than or equal to 0, f n uh, x to the n, then this means that f n f0 is equal to 0 and let's also assume that f prime 0 is not equal to 0. So this means that f1 is not equal to 0. So if you look at all formal power series uh, with these conditions, they take 0 to 0 and they have non-zero derivative at 0, then they form a group under composition and the Lagrange inversion theorem tells us what the uh, inverse uh, of a given series is in this group. So, um, so let f inverse, uh, so I'm going to write it like this so as to not confuse it with the function 1 over f, let this denote the compositional inverse of f. which means that f inverse composed with f is the identity function that is just the function x and f composed with f inverse is also the identity function. The Lagrange inversion theorem says or you could see Lagrange inversion formula it says that f inverse of x is equal to sum n greater than or equal to 1 d dt the n minus first derivative of t by f t to the power n evaluated at t equals 0 x to the n by n factor. So it gives us the exponential generating function for the um, compositional inverse of f. And what we are going to do is we are going to reinterpret this formula in terms of species. So we will prove it in a special case and that will turn out to be enough to, um, to deduce it in the general case. We will prove it in the special case that there exists a species R such that Rx is equal to x by fx. What this means is that uh, the generating uh, function of x by fx has, um, has uh, non-negative integer coefficients. Uh, but if you prove it for this, since the relationship between the coefficients of f and the coefficients of f inverse are basically polynomial relationships, each coefficient of f is going to be some sort of polynomial expression, each, co each, co each uh, coefficient of f inverse is going to be a polynomial in a finite set of coefficients of f, uh, it's enough to show that uh, these uh, identities hold in this case where uh, there exists a species R such that Rx is equal to x by fx. So we'll assume this and go ahead and prove uh, the Lagrange inversion theorem. So suppose there exists a species like this and let's say let Ax uh, be uh, the uh, compositional inverse. 
then we can say that x of r of a x well that's x times what is r r is x by f x so this is a x by f of a of x uh, which is uh, well f of a of x is just x so this is a x so what we see is that uh, the inverse satisfies the condition that x times r a x is equal to a x this looks familiar right recall that if you look at the species of r enriched uh, trees then this satisfies the equation a r is equal to x times r a r therefore what we get the species theoretic interpretation of the Lagrange inversion formula is that f inverse of x is nothing but the generating series of a r x. Hence, to prove the Lagrange inversion formula, I need to show that the number of AR structures on a set of size n, well that's the coefficient, uh, it, it, it is this quantity d dt n minus 1 t by ft r to the n. So that's just the coefficient of x to the n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial in r to the n. So this is equal to r to the power n, the number of n minus rn structures on a set of size um, n minus 1. So we'll prove this uh, in, in a few steps. So the first step, I will show that um, ar dot and r n is equal to n times r n n minus 1. This is just multiplication of integers. And uh, the proof, uh, again, I will uh, give you a kind of uh, uh, visual proof so the number of ar dot uh, end r structures on n so here's an example of an ar dot end r structure on a set so that means that there's a part of the set uh, on which you have an r enriched tree and the remaining you have an R enriched endo function. So that means that uh, there's only if you think of the so you can also think of an R enriched tree as an R enriched partial endo function where the root is the only point uh, which is not in the domain of the partial endo function. So this whole thing you can think of as uh, describing as a direct graph a function from u minus u naught u naught the root of the tree is the only node which does not have an out edge. So you can think of this function from u minus u naught to u. So it's an R enriched partial endo function with domain u minus u naught. So AR dot end R structures are the same as uh, you pick a point u naught to be the root and you have an R enriched partial endo function with domain u minus u naught. So what we get is a r and r n is equal to so the choice of u naught there are n choices times the number of f which are r enriched partial endo functions on the set n such that f has domain 
u minus u naught. But we've seen that uh, that is nothing but uh, n times r n n minus one in the previous lecture. At the end of the previous lecture, I proved that the number of uh, r enriched endo functions. Uh, with domain of size k is uh, the number of Rn structures on a set of size k. So that concludes the proof of the first step. And now I come to the second step. Where I will prove that uh, you look at the number of pointed uh, R enriched three structures on n that is the number of a r dot and r n structures here we have this uh, a r dot structure on a set um, uh, so the this red point here is the root and there's a second point which comes from pointing and uh, as we studied vertebrates earlier, we can think of this as an R enriched uh, vertebrate, so to speak. So let me just mark out the vertebral column. And uh, here's the vertebral column, which is joining the root to the uh, pointed uh, point. Now you detach all the, uh, so, so you have a sequence of points on the vertebral column and you detach all the trees that are associated to that point. And so here I have this uh, three, uh, if I remove this point which is on the vertebral column, then I have uh, three trees that are attached to this point. Here there are none. Uh, here there, is, there are two trees attached to this point. Here there are none. Here there's one. And I've also separated uh, the part of the, um, of the R enriched tree that is attached to the pointed point and everything that comes that is um, and which is not part of this vertebral column. So what you have here is uh, this point on the vertebral column is an extra point otherwise you have an R prime assembly of um, AR structures. Uh, the prime is because there's one additional point uh, on which the R structure is given, namely the point that lies on the vertebral column. So what we see here is that uh, A dot R is, uh, the species A dot R is uh, isomorphic to the species A R dot L of X dot R prime AR. That's exactly uh, what I've proved here. But now this is equipotent with AR dot S of X dot R prime AR. And we saw in the previous lecture that this is isomorphic to the species AR and R. And so what we have is an equipotence between AR dot R and AR times and R. which was exactly what we had claimed. So what do we get from all this? Well, what we have shown, uh, we have step one, which shows that AR dot and R has the same cardinality as N times RN minus one. And on the other hand, AR dot N has the same cardinality as AR dot and RN. So what we get is um, the cardinality of AR dot N 
is equal to n times uh, cardinality of Rn n minus 1. But this is nothing but n times the cardinality of Arn. And so we've shown that the cardinality of Arn is equal to the number of Rn structures on a set of size n minus 1. And this concludes the proof of the Lagrange inversion formula using species. Because uh, all we had to do was to prove this equality.